Alright, welcome back to another exciting tutorial series from the first person shooter series that we're currently creating. In the last level, in the last tutorial video, we sh I showed you how to set up a level transition. Transitioning from one level to the next to the next, so on and so forth. You can use it as many levels as you have. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to actually change or keep, not change, but keep the values from level A to level B to level C and so on and so forth unless of course you want to keep the values you know, always resetting each level which in some games you do but in this one we kinda of don't want to so we want to save them so if we have a quarter health we want to transition to the next level with a quarter health we want to transition to the next level with say like we had a quarter ammo when we finished it we want to have that quarter ammo when we start all right, so let's go ahead and get started. I already have some of the nodes in place, so I'm just going to go ahead and recreate a bunch of things to show you how I've done it. So now the first thing that we need to do is we need to open up the saved values or whatever it was that you're saving the, you're using the variable, you stored the variables for your saved game informations. And if you kept if you've kept up from the beginning to now, you may have one called new level. You may not have it. Um, some of y'all may have deleted it out, but go ahead and put it back in. We actually have a use for it now. So put it in, go ahead and make sure it's editable, and select it by default to true. That's all we have to do here. So go ahead and close out of that. We want to go into the save checkpoint thing. We want to make sure that down here, and in fact, let me rename this real quick. Open level information saving. All right. So whenever we go to open a new level, we save all information. We want to set new game to false. Now the reason we're setting it here to false is when we transition from level A to level B, it is no longer a new game. All right. This is just the system that I found to do this. I'm pretty sure there's probably a much better way to do this than what I have, but this works. I have tested it, I have used it. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that because we're done there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to go into the blueprints icon up here. We want to open your level blueprint. All right? And like I said, as you can see, we already have I already have everything in here. But I'm going to take all of this. Okay, I'm going to break this node and I'm going to break that node. Alright, we're going to select all of that and I'm just going to drag that on up here out of the way for now. Alright, so up to this point you should have this right here. That's all you should have as far as the event begin node has. Alright, so we're going to drag that all the way back here or wherever you want to drag it, don't really matter. Break the link. Alright, so now the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually go ahead and cast our character blueprint. So we're going to cast to, in my case it's the first person character because it's the default. We're going to get the player character because that's whose values we want. We want the character's values, not the controllers. We want to promote that to a to the character and I'm going to name this character because I already have char up there. So, in fact, let's go ahead and just delete that, and we'll just drag this on in there. All right. But, again, you can just right-click on this here and select the Promote to Variable Make Char. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to find out if a saved game exists. So, does save game exist? Well, where do we want to look for it? We want it to look in... Obviously, I can't spell. Save underscore zero zero one because that is the file name that we have been using. All right. We want to do a branch. Okay. Now, off of this branch, if the save game exists, well, we need to know: is it a new game or is it a is it not a new game? Which set of information are we going to load? So we need to load game from slot 
to save underscore zero zero one. Okay, write that on up here. We need to cast to the saved values. We want to take anything that's saved in the that slot, put it in the variables thing. Again, I've already made the variable because of the testing from earlier, but just right click on that, make variable. If you want to, again, you don't have to if you don't want to. We're going to drag off of the node and we're going to get new level. And then we're going to create a branch here. Okay. And connect up the condition. All right. So now what this is going to say is if it is a new level, all right, then we're going to set our values to true. We're going to set all of our values to default, which would be the same thing here. If the save file doesn't exist, we're going to set everything to default. Sorry, I had to pause a second. You might have heard my son hollering at me there for a minute. He was trying to get my attention for something. But uh, so we make our branch here. Okay, now just for the sake of of good times here, I'm going to just copy this. It's pretty standard. Everybody knows how to do that by now. That's been watching through this. If you don't, and this is the first time you've watched it. All you got to do is take your char, drag it out, do a git, drag off of the char node, do set health, there's your set health. You do the same thing for the rest of your variables. So we connect that to the true, and we also connect this one here, the false, to that. And this is going to be our new game values. All right. So if we start a new game on this level, then we have these values. But if we don't, well, we need to have those values that we're going to pull. So I'm going to do another paste of values there. But this time, I'm going to grab my save. I'm just going to make one note here. Get, and then I'm going to get health, get max health, get ammo, and get max ammo. And then connect all of these up. All right. So now with all of that, we're going to highlight those. We're going to comment these, and we're going to call these transition values. Okay. So when we transition from level A to level B, these are the values we're actually going to get. All right. Let me drag them up there a little bit. All right. And then now all we have to do is connect them to there and connect that up to there. That way we have everything all hooked back together and we're all good to go. Okay. All right. I just like having comments so I can remember what things do. All right. All right. So that's all we have to do to our level blueprint. So we can go ahead and compile that. We can save it. Okay. Now. There's one last thing that we need to do to make this fully function. If I was to play it right now, okay, what we would have is I would transition over to the next level. I would have my stats. But then when I die and I respawn, I would have my default stats again. We don't want that. We want to tell the system hey, I'm in a new level, you know, give me the stats I came here with. So we go into our first person character, right? and again, I already have a lot of things here. Okay. Um, I will show you this. I have not changed anything up to this point right here. Okay. Now, off of the, the load game from slot, cast to save, save values, saves, I made a branch. I put that before the branch for the respawn. Okay. I put that there 
because regardless of false or true, I'm going to have to have the values that were in that save file. Now, if it's true, if we are, if we have crossed the checkpoint and we are able to respawn at the checkpoint, then we just simply come here, we grab our base values. None of that has changed. Now down here, we made a new branch, okay, off of the false line. What we're testing for here is if it's a new level or not. If we are starting the, the, the level and it's a new level, then just spawn, then we just want to be able to respawn at the transform location. If it is not a new level, if it's not a new game, I should name that new game not new level, but oh well, too late now. And we have it set up to where once we're set to new level, it's false. We have transitioned into the next stage. Sorry for my stuttering, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Once we get that false, and we come here, and now we can get the ammunition, the health, the max health, the max ammo count that we had at the time of transitioning to that level every time we respawn. It is literally just a direct copy of what's above it. Now the reason we cannot just connect this false note up to here is because when we actually go to respawn, we don't know where to respawn. So we have to connect the end of that into the set, the spawn location to the actor transform. Because we are at the beginning of the game, so we still want to respawn at the player start until such time where we cross the actual checkpoint. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Let me do one thing real quick just to have my setup going right. I'm going to actually delete my current save file that I have. That way I can show this because I had one from when I was testing stuff. So I'm going to save this map real fast just so that I have it all saved. Because I have to open up my actual first map that's in our level setup. Otherwise this won't work too well. Alright, so here's the first level. Let's go ahead and play. Now we have our max ammo, we have our max health. I'm going to jump off this wall over here, lose a little bit of health or not. I'm going to fire off some we my weapon some. That seems like a good round number. Well, not round number, but you get the drift. We cross over the checkpoint. So now if I was to die here, I'd respawn back at my checkpoint. 14 out of 51 max ammo. Now remember our transition, our little transition is down this hallway right here. So we cross into it, we hit it. So now we go into the next level. Here's level two. We now have 14 out of 51 ammo. We have what we came over here with. Jump off of that, take me a little bit of damage. Okay. Now it will not work going into the third level because I haven't put it into there yet. But if we were to die here. Notice that we spawn back up on the top of the hill with the 1451 that we had to begin with. We don't have any health loss because I didn't lose any health until after jumping off that cliff. So that being that, we can come up here, we can hit the checkpoint. We slide through, we hit the checkpoint there. If we die, we come back to the checkpoint, still 14 out of 51. And then when we transition into level 3, it should actually go back to being the default values. Or it may not. Hey, it didn't. It actually kept us with those base values. And then if we die here, we respawn up there and we have 14 out of 51. So that's actually working as intended. That's actually really good. Um, I did not expect that, but when you get stuff that you don't expect to work, that's actually a lot better. Now, one thing you will notice with this, though, if I back out of that and I play again, notice my ammo and my max ammo count is 14 out of 51. The reason for that is nothing in the game, nothing in the blueprints, has reset the new level marker to being true again. That would actually be done via a title screen, which we will create in an upcoming video. I'm going to show you how to create just a simple basic title screen so that we don't have that anymore. It'll actually reset the marker 
the game will become true again until we cross into the next level and then it will become not true and allow us to continue maintaining our values and going on. So that being that, that's all we're going to do in this video. In the next video, we're going to do the title screen. We're going to set that up real quick. And I think there's one or two other things I want to cover in this, but for the most part, we're actually almost done with this series. So hang in there just a little longer and we'll be done. Thank you.